Good evening. Good evening. Welcome back to RMU TV's live music series. This year, the uh, Capstone Media Arts class at Robert Morris University has partnered with the Blues Society of Western Pennsylvania to provide blues music entertainment for the, the series this year. So, we have two acts for you from Pittsburgh, Jimmy Adler and Charlie Barath and Gary Antoll. And starting off the show tonight, I would like to introduce singer and guitarist Jimmy Adler. Hi, Jimmy, and welcome to RMU. Hello, thanks for having me back. It's been uh, about six years I was here. You're right. Once upon a time. Well, we got you down in the TV studio this time. Yeah, Jimmy. this is fancy down here. Yeah, we had you up in the radio station <laughs> last time. So, well, good to hear you. Let's hear some music. Okay, buddy. all right. <laughs> Jumping from six to twelve On the back porch in the shade Billy piles barbecue on his plate Donna comes dancing, shaking her hips Plants a kiss on Billy's lips And it's hot Woo! She got him moving Like hands on a clock Can't help himself He's jumping from six to twelve son Behind the swing, Billy gives Donna a diamond ring. Stars are sparkling in the sky like the promise in a young lover's eye. It's hot. Woo! She got him moving like hands on a clock. Can't help himself jumping from six to twelve. Woo! It's hot. She's got him moving. Like the hands on a clock Can't help himself You know, he's jumping from 6 to 12 This is a capo. This is allows you to play different things. So if we're teaching anything, that's a capo, a clamp. Oh, do, oh you want me to still play? Oh, thank you. All right. Well, then. Thank you. 
Well, we're going to dance down in New Orleans. We're going to dance down in New Orleans. Just you and me up on the balcony. We're going to move Beneath the voodoo moon We're gonna move Beneath the voodoo moon Just you and me Up on the balcony Come on out, you know We'll leave all our worries behind Walk the streets and see what we might find. We're packing up, gonna fly away. We're packing up, gonna fly away. I only wish, I wish that we could leave today. Come on now. Flying in from Baltimore time to talk a little bit yeah cool Jimmy how about you uh, give a little background about yourself for the listeners tonight well um, I've been playing music in and around Pittsburgh area for um, probably 35 or more years uh, taught high school English for about 30 years and um, um, that's uh, the background of me as a guitar player. I've been playing for quite a while uh, around town. Yeah, I know. You, I met you and Charlie, uh, well, probably about 10, 12 years ago at yeah. uh, Blues Challenge. You guys won. That's cool. Um, what got you interested in the blues, Jimmy? B.B. Uh, King, um, Jimmy Reed, uh, Elmore James, and probably first uh, the Rolling Stones. Um, uh, somebody gave me a record, a Sticky Fingers record, which is the Andy Warhol cover with his zipper that actually goes up and down. And, and uh, the Rolling Stones uh, were a thing. Uh, and I played with my brother, who was a drummer, and we had a band in high school. Um, but somehow, uh, when I heard B.B. King uh, do a particular song from Cook County Jail, it was really riveting. And, um, and I learned that the Rolling Stones, on their very first record, did all cover songs, um, 
Jimmy Reed songs on there and um, uh, Slim Harpo. And so, you know, then this is an old tale that everybody uh, tells from my generation and even older that um, it took the British mm -hmm. to bring the American music back to America for the kids to say, whoa, what is that? I mean, it happened with the blues. It happened in the 70s with punk rock, the same thing, you know. There it was in your own backyard and you didn't even know it. But B.B. King, really, uh, and, and Keith Richards, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, even B.B. Ward, he, he's always said that uh, how much the Stones did for the blues and for him, even for B.B. and the artists like that at that time, how, how big it was for them to play blues on their albums when it wasn't getting played here. Yeah, no, absolutely, and the Stones are responsible for having all those guys open up for them mm -hmm. uh, all the time. I can Tina Turner, Buddy Guy, B.B. King, on and on and on. Um, yeah. Right, right, right. Jimmy, how would you describe your musical style? Um, well, you know, I um, play primarily with my fingers uh, only because uh, out of stubbornness as a kid, I would drop the pick on the floor, would fall under the couch or in the couch, and I just got um, uh, tired of chasing the pick around. Uh, and I found that, thankfully, my, my fingers, you know, were intact, and I always had them. So um, that, that's part of my style. I learned later uh, that the great Hubert Sumlin, who played with um, Holland Wolf, played with mm -hmm. his fingers. Of course, Mark Knopfler, everybody knows from Dire Straits. They had that great hit out, Sultan's a Swing, back when I was in high school. He plays with his fingers. And so there are other people. Jeff Beck played with his fingers. Um, so there's limitations when you don't have a pick. But um, part of my style, I suppose, is having the, f the flesh on the strings, mm -hmm. you know? It's a different feel. I was going to say, what's, what's, the dif what's the difference between using a pick and, and just using your fingers? Well, for me, I think b c c there, there's more control because I can, you know, I can snap the string. Okay. And it just feels like um, with a pick, um, it's still rather cumbersome for me. Although there are things that I do with a pick. Mm -hmm. um, but never as comfortably as playing with just my fingers. Okay. It just feels more natural that it's just my fingers on the strings. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that's part of the style. And then just trying to emulate all of my heroes mm -hmm. um, comes out sounding like whatever it sounds like because I could never really um, mimic, uh, uh, you know, B.B. King or all those great people. You know, I tried, but I couldn't. So uh, as a result of playing with my fingers, and admiring all of the blues guitar players, trying to emulate them, looking up to them, uh, that results in whatever I'm doing, uh, for better or for worse. Okay, yeah. cool. I like it. I like it. How about you play a couple more songs for us, Jimmy? Okay. <laughs> it's the music of the streets. It's the music of the streets With that dance hall beat Where the people move their feet Doing the Kingston shuffle From the birth of that sound It has traveled all around When you're lost you can be found Doing the Kingston shuffle from prophets and preachers, producers and teachers, sticking to their African roots, planting seeds deep in the ground until the whole world bears the fruits. shout you find out what it's all about a celebration to be free doing the kings in shuffle from across the river banks 
Everybody giving thanks A celebration to be free Doing the kings and shuffle From Gordon to Jordan and Memphis to Marley Sticking to their African roots Clement, Dodd and the downbeat sound Rolled the dance hall for miles around the street where that dance hall beat where the people move their feet doing the Kingston shuffle from the birth of that sound it has traveled all around when you're lost you can be found doing the Kingston shuffle from across the river banks giving thanks to the kings didn't shuffle. <clears throat> That's a Latin flavor from uh, Kingston, Jamaica because uh, the people in Kingston, Jamaica, were very influenced by the 1960s music coming out of particularly Memphis. Uh, um, uh, and they were using that music in their dance halls. And then they realized when that music kind of dried up and they weren't able to go over there and get those records, that they would just invent their own stuff. Um, and it's kind of like what, what we call maybe a rumba, that, that kind of uh, Kingston shuffle. Um, did you want me to play another song? Okay. Hmm. One arm around his neck Clutching a bottle of gin His hand slides down her waist As the blue lights dim Dancing side by side They're doing the slow Your worries go out the door When you slow drag Cross the floor Sensual cool precision Like dancing on a dime Bodies cheek to cheek Bump and grind They're doing a 
and slow, slow drag. All your worries go out the door when you slow drag across the floor. your telephone give someone a call they're dancing side by side Jimmy, very nice. So, a couple more questions for you, Jimmy, and then we can play one more song and go to our break. Okay. Um, you said you've been playing f in the Pittsburgh area for over 30 years. What inspires you to keep performing, Jimmy? Well, it's a selfish thing. I mean, I can't speak for other artists, but I think if you're painting like Picasso or you're trying to play like B.B. King, um, for me, it's definitely a self-centered thing because it's spiritually, it, it does something for me. And so, um, you know, the art is interesting. We practice our art, our craft in isolation. You know, to get really good, we got to lock ourselves up in the room and, 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 you know, see how the paints match and how they mix or see how the guitar will work. Uh, but, it, but it doesn't live or breathe until you can bring it to an audience, you know. Um, some people like, you know, Van Gogh was not fam famous in his time, and now everybody knows his paintings, you know, so the, the, the suffering, starving artists' metaphors, uh, uh, comments are pr probably true in many instances, but to answer your question, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, brevity is the soul of wit. Uh, what, what keeps me playing is really uh, for my own satisfaction, but then I do hope that when I can present it to somebody, I can serve up a particular meal of music that I like, and I hope that they come away with a satisfied um, taste uh, you know, that, 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 that they've heard something that they enjoy or maybe something that they've never heard before. Because particularly with the blues, uh, it is not something that you're going to get served up all the time unless your parents are listening to these records at home. You're never going to hear it. Uh, you'll hear it maybe on a radio commercial, but, but people flick through commercials. So, you know, to, be, to have the, the blessing and the opportunity with people like the Blue Society in Western Pennsylvania that create this mm -hmm. and help people get uh, gigs, per se, to, be, to have a place to play mm -hmm. is the most important thing because the audience is the most important thing. So in summary, I play because it's selfish satisfaction, but it's even more joyful when you can serve it up to someone and they appreciate it and they go on maybe to say, hey, I really like that music, and then they begin to learn more about it. So that's it for yeah, me, you, you know. You get that one person interested in it, then you succeeded, man, and that's, that's good. <clears throat> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, you mentioned a uh, number of guitar players, great guitar players. If there was uh, one person that you could take the stage with, it could be somebody past or present, 
who would that be? Well, when you talk about like <clears throat> mostly what I try to do, like blues-based music, I mean, B.B. King is would have to be the guy. I mean, he's the king of it all. He was started recording in the late 40s. So he influenced many famous guitar players. And he, he brought uh, a certain kind of decorum to, to, to the stage. It wasn't just his, his ability to play and to sing, mm -hmm. uh, but his whole demeanor of presenting the music, being the ambassador of the blues. B.B. King really brought respect to a genre that otherwise may have been looked at as an old black sharecroppers kind of music. B.B. Um, King really deserves to be the guy um, that, and I, I had the good fortune of meeting him two times. One time I was able to sit and talk with him for quite a while, but, but I never got to play with him. But uh, he would be the guy just because uh, what he stands for. B.B. King was a student of T-Bone Walker, and T-Bone Walker was one of the great guys from the 1940s who really had one foot in jazz and one foot in the blues. He began to play that single string thing that B.B. King became known for. So my lesson to anybody listening about this is to go way back to B.B. King's records from the 50s, listen to B.B. King from the 60s, all this stuff before the thrill is gone. Uh, he, he covered so much in his lifetime, uh, but in the beginning he was kind of emulating his hero. He, uh, he was a disciple of, of T-Bone Walker. Um, and so B.B. King has, um, his, the voice of his guitar is very um, diverse, and it's, um, he would be the guy, mm -hmm. B.B. King, no question. Yeah, B.B. was something else, that's for sure. And, he, and he, he's, you know, he had his troubles, too, because he was playing the blues, but he was playing with a big band and stuff like that, and some of the blues purists that... They didn't like that, you know? So. Well, yeah, I mean, part of his sound is, is with the big band, but, you know, it, it, there's a couple of records from the early 1960s called um, My Kind of Blues mm -hmm. uh, is one of them, and it's really stripped down. It's B.B. King, uh, it's the guitar of B.B., it's a drummer, a bass player, and a little bit of piano in the background. Mm -hmm. And I love saxophones, um, but, but this is, these are interesting records because you hear B.B. really stripped down without, without the band. And there's also a great show on uh, Ralph Gleason TV, black and white, from like 19, uh, maybe 63 or something. Mm -hmm. And it's B.B. King with a drummer, a couple of horns, and a B3 player who's doing the bass um, with his feet and playing the B3. Um, and it's, it's um, stripped down, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's why I say B.B. King, if you, if you heard of him or you think of him, The Thrill Is Gone is probably the most well-known song. It's like, you know, to B.B. King, what the stairway to heaven is to, to, to uh, Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. but, but there's uh, so much stuff before that mm -hmm. that is really um, uh, great and diverse and worth listening to. Mm -hmm. And again, because he was more than just a player, he was a really spokesperson for uh, the respect of the music. Yeah. Last question for you, Jimmy. What's the blues mean to you? Well, I mean, it's an African-American art form. Mm -hmm. it comes out of oppression, uh, but it is not sad. It is celebratory. You know, people could get out on a Saturday night and finally let their hair down, you know, mm -hmm. have a little drink, do a little dance, make a little love, you know. Um, but uh, to me, uh, it is a kind of just, a, like I said earlier, that healing thing. Um, I am certainly, you know, uh, uh, can't speak for, for, for where it comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't, uh, that I've met it, I've not lived that experience. But to me, the beautiful thing about it, there was a great um, white Jewish player in, in, in uh, Chicago in the 1960s named Michael Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. And he played with uh, the Butterfield Blues Band. And Paul Butterfield was one of the great harmonica players. Um, they, they, they had like a half black, half white band. They recruited a couple of guys from Holland Wolf's band. They had Sam Lay on the drums right. and uh, 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 Arnold, uh, Joe Arnold on the, on the uh, bass. So they were really blending that this music can bring people together. You know, same down with Stax, with, with, with the great rhythm section of, of a Booker, Booker, Booker T, T being, uh, you know, the, the black drummer and keyboard mm -hmm. and, and a white guitar player and bass player, really showing uh, how, how, how this is a, a, a thing that can bring people together. Music can bring people together. The blues, to me, uh, if you learn the genre, you learn the formula, the 12 bars, the structures, the, the, the sequence, if you get it in your blood, get it in your system, then you can only try to emulate it. You may never master it, but if it makes you feel good and if you make others feel good along the way, that's the thing. So to me, I just love the way the music feels and sounds, and I just get immersed in it. And, 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 and as an art form, as a genre, 
I mean, if you're painting a Picasso cubism thing, it looks a certain kind of way. It's got very vibrant colors. That's what you're going for. Um, but, you know, I can't say what Picasso's life was like. I can't live his life. And same with blues. I mean, B.B. King went from a sharecropper to a tractor driver to Memphis to, to world fame. Uh, but but, but, but the, the art, the art of that music, that style, that structure um, uh, brings people together. Um, black, white, it doesn't matter. And, and, and it's very uh, special uh, in that way. And it's like a religious experience. And so what the blues means to me is I have something that I can always have and always hold on to. So when you're feeling down and out, if you you know get yourself an instrument, learn to play it because you will always have the music. Yes, it's a challenge. You're, I'm always trying to be better all of my life, and I'll go to the grave trying to wish I could do something even more. You know, yeah. but but it, it is the 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 it is the journey, right? Yeah. It is us trying to find. Uh, 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 that holy grail, maybe never getting there, but the journey along the way, and we have to savor that. The people that we meet, the people that we play with, uh, the people that we get to share the music with, um, and, and to really appreciate and respect the art, and to have the, the, the opportunity to play right here, right now, to have the opportunity to play other places is a real blessing, because you, know, you can play in your bedroom and it gives you so much satisfaction, you're practicing in isolation, but you have to have an audience to make it live, to make it breathe, and to make you feel satisfaction. And the blues to me is all of that. That's great, I love it. Jimmy, how about one more song before we go to break? Yes. All right. Okay, what will it be? Um, oh yeah, okay. I'm just thinking about this. <laughs> I'm going to do a little instrumental. I'm thinking about Freddie King. Freddie King was a great uh, instrumental guy. I'm thinking in his style and with a tip of the hat to the great, uh, uh, the great songwriter, Smokey Robinson. <laughs> B.B. <laughs> One for B.B. King. <laughs> Thanks again, Jimmy Adler. Thank Appreciate you, it. and thank you all for doing what you're doing. I hope you uh, make some good stuff. <laughs> well, we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back with Charlie Barath and Gary Antle.
Welcome, right. b welcome back to our RMU TV's live music series. And right now, I I'd like to introduce a friend of my radio show, Charlie Barath, Gary Ann Toll. Welcome doing, back, man? Charlie. Yeah, great to be here, man. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. All right, man. My pleasure. So let's get rolling, buddy. All right. <laughs> Well, I ain't gonna pay you attention Ain't gonna flash you a grin Ain't gonna watch you watching me No, I ain't gonna let you in Cause I might fall in love I might fall tab at the bar Ain't gonna take you on a long moonlight drive Sit there just staring at the stars Cause I might fall in Shake your daddy's hand Ain't gonna be nice to your little brother Cause I'm afraid of where I might land Yeah, I might fall in love Yeah, I might fall in love Last thing In a big old fancy church And tell the whole wide world I do Cause I might fall in love Yeah, I might fall in love Last thing I wanna do Is to fall in love with you But I just might Fill it with kids and puppies and kittens too Ain't gonna make you the center of my world No, I ain't gonna grow old with you Cause I might fall in love Yeah, I might fall in love Last thing I wanna do Is to fall in love with you But I just might I might fall in love Well, I might fall in love Last thing I want to do Is to 
fall in love with you, but I just might. song for you. Not recorded yet, but it shall be someday. This next one is uh, on my last record. It's uh, a bit autobiographical. It's about making bad decisions and then figuring out that that's not a good idea. A little something called Much Better Now. Well, I ain't going back. Life was one big party, but I got through it all somehow. Magic to survive, yes, I'm still alive, and I'm doing much better now. Charlie, I know you're from Beaver County, but uh, how about you give a little background for some of our listeners about yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, actually, I'm a, from a little further down the river in southeastern Ohio, a little town of Barton, Ohio, in uh, Belmont County. Okay. Moved to Beaver County in the mid-80s, uh, and um, a retired carpenter. Um, been messing around with the harmonica for a lot of years, and uh, I think it's about time I got serious about it. <laughs> what got you interested in the harmonica? Uh, well, it was uh, something I could afford. I, uh, you know, I didn't have uh, an opportunity to get any musical training and guitar lessons and piano lessons and things like that. Um, but I remember walking into the music store at the mall and uh, those uh, marine bands, uh, Hona Marine bands were sitting there and the price tag I think was like six dollars or something and I had six dollars in my pocket so so I bought one and took it home and uh, yeah for better or worse that's where it all started. Yeah, look at you now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look at me now. <laughs> what got you interested in the blues Charlie? Uh, the blues, well like Jimmy had mentioned earlier you know uh, a lot of us uh, in this generation uh, were introduced to that kind of music through uh, some of that British invasion, some of those guys. And, and I remember listening to some of those early uh, Zeppelin records and the Stones records. And, and I wasn't quite sure why, but there were certain tracks on those albums that made me feel differently. Mm -hmm. You know, and the 
as I <clears throat> come to explore a little bit more deeply, uh, you know, those were those old blues covers that they were that were right here in our backyard. But um, you know, not everybody had access to that, depending on what part of the country you were living in at the time. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, at that point, I decided that you know I, I needed to dig back and learn a little bit more about uh, about those guys who created that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, so that was my gateway. Yeah, a lot of folks, like you said, go back and look and see who wrote the songs that they're playing, and then right, you yeah. realize, yeah. you know, let's see what that guy did. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. what inspired these fellows to do this? Because, yeah. uh, and like I said, it just, I, I wasn't sure why, but those, those songs made me feel differently. And then, oh, of course, when you go back and, and uh, you, you find those original versions, you know, of those songs that you knew from this, this direction, and uh, it, it's, you know, it'll set you down. I can remember the first time I heard uh, Bring It On Home, the, the original version by Bryce Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, I was driving, and uh, I literally pulled over to listen to the song because, you know, all I knew was the heavier Led Zeppelin treatment of that song. But uh, when I heard that original version, it was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlie, how would you describe your style, your music style? Um, you know, music has changed just in my lifetime. I, I saw it start to get formulated in a, you know, when I was in high school, and then it really kind of, they put that in high gear and all the genre blending and genre bending and making things sound a certain way. And like that didn't really appeal to me. I mean, I appreciate what the musicians and the producers have done with that, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm always one that likes to dig back and you know and find the source and find find the roots. And and uh, you know I can remember you know thinking you know being a kind of a rock and roll guy. I remember thinking I wasn't the new rock and roll wasn't really working for me, and uh, and I decided to go back. And I just got this love affair with traditional music of all styles, not mm -hmm. just blues, you know, early country, uh, you know, uh, Cajun music, a lot of different ethnic musics. I grew up with a lot of ethnic music, you know, in my family and what, you know, places we went and, and hearing all that stuff. And, uh, you know, so it really bleeds into not only my playing, but my songwriting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so in a word, traditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, you know, there's, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So right. that's kind of where I'm at, and uh, there are people doing some really exciting, innovative things, um, but I just love, I just love the traditional feel, and, and it is, it's really all about feel when you get into this kind of music. And hey, that's important as an artist, you got to feel it, man. <laughs> uh, well, and not only for the artist, but for the people listening, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, uh, that's what it is, mm -hmm. I think. That's cool, cool. How about a couple more songs, Charlie, and then we'll talk some more. That sounds great. How about if I uh, give us all a surprise and I bring my good friend Mr. Jimmy Adler to join us on a couple of couple of songs? That would be that's great. That's all right. If you guys don't mind a, a little more Jimmy Adler guitar no, mix. Oh, never enough Jimmy, man. Never, yeah. That's the way I feel. <laughs> that's the way I feel. So I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do it. the next two songs. I'm going to do uh, amplified harmonica. So it's going to come through this little overdriven amplifier, and it's got a completely different feel and sound, uh, but it's one that I'm really fond of. Uh, these two songs are both on my last record. The first one is a little uh, boogaloo number called Traveling Woman. Ready, fellas? One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
town Yeah, my baby Sweetest girl in town There's just one little problem Girl, don't never stick around Well, I love my baby She got that traveling jumps Yes, I love my baby Girl, got that traveling jump When she's out on the highway Man, I sit here all alone When my woman come back home Lord, we have some fun When my baby come back home Lord, Lord, we have some fun Next thing I know, she got go girls on the run. you another one from the record this is uh this is one actually that uh very autobiographical as well i wrote this song about my mother um and uh it's a little something i call a highball and a covered dish a Polish girl down Belmont County way Grandma was a Polish girl 
Grandma was a Polish girl Way down Belmont County way One taste of a cooking Our grandpa was there to stay Haluka and Haluske Kel Bossa filled the air. Haluki and Haluski, the smell of Kel Bossa filled the air. When she started in a cooking, man, she come from everywhere. Wedding or funeral, it was a highball and a covered dish. Wedding or funeral, it was a highball and a covered dish. Bingo every Friday. Man, that whole place smell like fish. I oh, play that slide, Jimmy. Church on Sunday morning She was back at home by noon Church on Sunday morning She was back at home by noon Grandpa helping in the kitchen I roll pierogi all afternoon First one up every morning She was the last one to go to bed First one up every morning She was the last one to go to bed That's a true story She wore a homemade apron and a babushka on her head. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate that, man. Hi, Jimmy. One more time for Jimmy. Nice slide, baby. <laughs> So, Charlie, you mentioned Homer, uh, Honer harmonicas before. <laughs> I, if I could get it out, I'd it's ask you a you question <laughs> about it. <laughs> but anyway, you want to talk a little bit about your relationship with them? Yeah, Honer, um, Honer harmonicas out of Germany. Um, they are um, one of the oldest and original uh, makers of these diatonic harmonicas. As I mentioned, the, uh, that first $6 harmonica I bought back in whenever it was, 79, 80, whatever that was, um, it was a Honer Marine Band. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and it was, I played them pretty much exclusively. I've tried other brands. I still have other harmonicas that I hardly ever use. I keep going back to the Honers. And, um, Along about 2019, I guess, uh, I got a, uh, a call from KH KHS Honer, who is the distributor for Honer Harmonicas here in the U.S., inviting me to be a part of their endorsement team. And uh, I was like very honored and uh, thrilled to get that call, as you would imagine. And, yeah. uh, and I've been 
playing them ever since. Um, I play exclusively honers. Most of the harmonicas that I gig with, the uh, diatonics, are customized mm -hmm. uh, by a good friend of mine up in Joliet, Illinois, by the name of Joe Felisco. Uh, dear friend of mine, world-renowned player and teacher and customizer, and uh, I've studied with Joe, and he was actually probably, if I had to pick, I know he hates when, when I say this, but if I had to pick one guy who would be pinned as a mentor, mm -hmm. per se, it would definitely be Joe. Charlie, I was going to ask you that question, man. Yeah, I mean, I that's not punch, right. <laughs> that's not fair. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, keeping up with the harmonicas, though, I was, you have a number of harmonicas there. What's the difference between some of those that you have with you? Well, uh, you know, the diatonic harmonica, it's not a chromatic instrument, uh, and each one is tuned in a different key. So you can play. Uh, and the skilled hands, the uh, diatonic harmonica can be played in several different keys on the same harmonica, but um, they, weren't, they weren't originally designed to be played like that. They were actually designed to um, play completely different music from what you might be used to hearing on a harmonica. So when you think about where and when this instrument was developed, it was in in Europe, in Germany, in the, in the middle of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So what kind of music were they listening to and playing back then? It was oompa music, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, so it was really, <laughs> exactly, it was intended, there are two chords built into this instrument, you know, in the labeled key, so this is labeled in key of A, so there's an A chord, <laughs> so the one chord, and then there's a, um, uh, a five chord, E chord. And then from the middle up, they have all the uh, major scale notes available. So the way it was intended to play was to um, play the melody out of the right side of your mouth and through manipulating your tongue, lifting that up and down on the lower end where those chords are to give you kind of an accompaniment. So, you know, they weren't playing blues and country and rock and roll. They were doing like a... Like a so that's kind of that's how they were designed, and, and initially they weren't available in all the keys, but they had a few different ones, mm -hmm. and then eventually they expanded when things when they started to make their way across the world and get in other people's hands who were trying to do different things, and there were a lot of happy accidents, the bending and the and the other positional playing and all those things. So, um, you know, had the first guy who set that tuning up, um, I'm sure he couldn't fathom what harmonicas are doing now yeah so but yeah that's kind of a that's kind of been my story um, as I said I I could afford one at the time mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my dad played uh, somewhat and he was really good he did he played in that uh, that mm -hmm. traditional style and a good friend of his by the name of Big Mike was a dear friend of his in my home little coal mining town where I grew up and they they were always playing um, and uh, you know and I thought well I could do that. I would sneak the old man's harmonica out of his desk drawer when he was off running errands and stuff. And uh, you know, and I finally decided to make the big six dollar investment and get my own. <laughs> <laughs> Saved your money, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as you said earlier, look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question for you, Charlie. Sure. If you could, if you could take the stage with any person right now, who would it be? It could be past or present. Well. As a blues harmonica guy, I mean, I play a lot of different styles, all traditional, and I do a lot of different things with this instrument, but, uh, you know, the one of the things that I really love more than anything else and get enjoyment from is playing traditional blues. Uh, and there isn't a blues harmonica player alive who wouldn't um, give a large fortune to go back in time and play with the Muddy Waters Band in Chicago back in their heyday. Uh, and a lot of cats have come through there, and to get the harmonica chair in that band was, uh, you know, there's a scant well, few hey. people on that list, and they're all monsters, and, uh, you know, Little Walter and James Cotton and Junior Wells, and, uh, you know, I, 
the list goes on. It's Pretty much all. They're, all. they're all Hall of Famers. Fantastic. <laughs> Hall of Famers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Hall of Famers. Jerry Portnoy. Yeah. Um, you know, it just, you know, to, to be able to go back and do that, um, you know, I know I can't. And I would probably be petrified to be in the presence of those guys because they were, they were giants. Yeah, an exciting time in Chicago Blues, man. That's for sure. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, Charlie, I think we've got time for one more song. How about that? You ready? Okay. So I'm going to do this one. It's a little uh, on the torchy side, um, but it's, a, it's a, a song that I wrote, and it's about uh, loss, and it's a sad song, you know, as you would expect from time to time, uh, a sad song. But uh, this, is, uh, this goes out to anybody who's ever lost someone and for any reason and would love nothing more than to have one more day with them. <coughs> Skies are gray, ain't no sun since you gone. My world's undone. If I could have just one wish, I'd wish for one more day. Ever since you went away, only darkness, both night and day. I don't ask for much, I'd show sure love one more day.
When you left, it changed my life. Emptiness cuts like a knife. Oh, what I would not give for just one more day. One more day with you. Very nice. Well, this is our last show for this year for the live RMU TV live music series. I hope you've enjoyed all the blues acts that we provided for you today and during the uh, sh series. And just want to say thanks again to Charlie Barath, Gary Antol, and Jimmy Adler over there in the stands for putting on a great show again tonight. Hope to see everyone again next year. <laughs>